Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a new game with me here in the palm of your hand, a deduction party game. Now this game has a concept that is very unique and that's what makes this game so interesting. This concept is not for everyone, but it definitely makes this game stand apart from others. So here it is. One player will play as the player who mimes out memories using objects in the game. This player is called the child. Another player is called the grandfather or the grandmother and holds their hand out with their eyes closed. The child will use whatever objects to mime their specific card on the other player's hand. All other players in the game watch the miming and play other cards out that are similar and the grandparent opens their eyes and must find the right memory among all the cards out on the table, including the ones the players placed out to make their decision harder. So players will play this game out in teams of either two or three players per team, and each team is given six memory cards and the remaining form a face down deck. Teams take turns in which one team will choose one of their members to become the grandparent and another one to become the child. The player playing the child will mime two memories and they will draw one card from their deck not showing anyone else and the grandparent lays out their hand and closes their eyes. The child player then uses any objects that they wish to simulate the feel of the image from the card that they drew. Any number of objects can be used and they can be used however the player wants. The child is not allowed to test their miming on their own hand beforehand and the two players can't speak to each other during this. They can only tell the player when they're switching to their second card. Neither player can stop and restart the mime, and the child needs to mime in a way so all other players can see. When the child player is done, they will announce this and place their card face down on the table. Each opposing team will secretly choose one of their cards from their hand and place it face down in front of the child player. And teams should pick a card that could resemble what they just saw mimed. Each opposing team then draws a new card. And when this is done, the child moves on to their second card doing the same steps, choosing a memory, miming the memory, and then other players interfering with the memory by placing similar cards. The child player then takes their two cards that they mimed, plus the cards placed down by all the other teams. And if there are less than eight cards, they will also add cards from the deck. So there are a total of eight cards. The grandparent opens their eyes. They shuffle the eight cards and lay them out face up in front of them to see. They will then find the two cards, or they will need to find the two cards that were mined, and they specifically need to know which one was the first memory and which one was the second. The player who is the grandparent can voice out their reflections and their thoughts as this makes the game more interesting to the other players, but the player playing as the child should hold the poker face this entire time. The active team scores one point per card that they guess correctly. The opposing team scores one point for each of their misleading cards that the grandparent chooses. Points are tracked with rocket tokens and each represents one point. The next team will then go and in a clockwise direction, teams will take turns. The game ends when everyone has played the role of the grandparent at least once, which should be at least two turns per team. And the team with the most points wins. When players get better at the game, constraint cards can be added in where they will only be able to use certain items that are on certain cards or use at least just the object shown on a card. Some say you cannot mime on a location on the hand like the fingers, while the others say you only can mime on a certain location. Others make it so you can use at least only at least three objects or you can only use one object. The game includes rules for a two or three player game, but the game is designed better for four or more players. And well, that's the game. It's very different from a lot of other games that we're used to playing, but for that reason, it makes the game interesting. And we found that at the beginning of when we started playing this, when first learning it, we didn't do too well. When acting the scene out on someone's hand, you think you can feel more than what you actually can feel being the player who feels it. And the player with their eyes closed can be very confused. It's harder than you think 
to feel everything that the other player is doing. With time, you will play both sides and figure out some ways to help this, but we also found out that two cards at the beginning was hard to pick out when first starting. You would remember the actions performed for one of them and not remember a thing for the other. So we started with just one card at a time and then progressed to the two card thing. The game has a memory element to it, you know, and since you really don't know what the player is acting out on your palm or your hand, you have to remember things. And then when the cards are laid out in front of you, you have to rely on that memory of what they did and apply that with each card that you see, which one matches the best. At this point, the feelings and the motions finally make a little more sense. And if that player did enough, of a mix in multiple aspects of an image, then it's easier for the other player to come to a conclusion as to which memory you were reminding them of. So this game is different and does some cool things, but I feel like this is more of a game for people who really want to connect with others on a deeper level. And the more players playing the game, the better the game is. So it's a weird mix as you need lots of people, but the game is searching for that deeper player interaction experience. One which I wouldn't be necessarily wanting with uh, that many different people. It's like one of those party games where you put on the spot as well, but also need to connect with that other player. And when you don't know that person, all of that, well, it just seems weird. So. There might be a place for this game for some people, but for most, if not all of my gaming time, I either don't have that many players, I want uh, to play a more strategic complex game, or I'd rather play a different party game when having more people present. The game has a good idea for it, but it's just not for me. But it might be for you, so revisit memories with your family and friends in the palm of your hand. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.